who can't govern his wife has gone as far as he can go in government. You are depraved. A woman without honor. And this is what you want. Do you know what you want? It's such a well-known novel, obviously. What was your first reaction when you read the script? I didn't know the novel. I knew of the novel. And I was excited to read the script because it was by Tom Stoppard. And, I, and because of Joe, uh, whose films I loved. And I, I knew him as a, as a, as a friend. And um, the script was so elegant and beautifully spare and subtle and yet seemed to have such weight and detail. And I liked too that, that Karenin in particular was not just the bad guy, not just this sort of loveless uh, icicle that, that, that had rejected her or given her a loveless marriage, that, that it was more complicated than that. And um, I was excited to be in it, yeah. Obviously this is your third time working with Joe. Mm. Are you gonna reach kind of Tim Burton, Johnny, Johnny Depp heights? I don't know. What's the goal? <laughs> I don't know, no. I mean, we haven't talked about doing anything else, you know. I mean, but, but no, I feel very fortunate to have like a, a relationship like that within in the industry, you know. I mean, we've done three films and about three or four adverts or something like that, you know, and we live very close together, so I see him an awful lot. <laughs> um, and yeah, I, I, I just feel very lucky to have that kind of a creative relationship with somebody. And you've been in so many films now and covered so many decades. How, how was Russia 1870s for you? It was lovely. <laughs> no, I mean, I think what's interesting about this take on it is that we've gone for this very heightened reality, if theatrical. not fantasy. Mm. It's a very theatrical, it's not a naturalistic telling of the story. You know, it's set in this kind of strange theatre. It's incredibly stylized. And I, I think I think that was one of the most exciting things about the project. You know, originally when we first started talking about it, it was meant to be a naturalistic telling of it. But as it sort of developed, you know, Joe suddenly went, no, let's do something very different with it. Now, the, the big twist that you did, of course, is bringing this theatrical element. You came, came up with that idea quite, quite late on, really, yeah. didn't you? Can yeah. you tell us a bit about that? It was a bit late. Um, <laughs> uh, well, it was about ten weeks out of shooting and we still didn't know where we were going to shoot it. And these locations that I was looking at just felt kind of tired. And I was remembering rather nostalgically when we made uh, Atonement and Pride and Prejudice how so much of those films were shot in one location. And that creates a really nice atmosphere. It really kind of uh, creates a company feeling. And so I thought to myself, well, if this film was set in one place, what would it be? It occurred to me that it might be a theatre, that all these people were living their lives on show, uh, as if upon a stage, and that a lot of the, a lot of the, the, the film's um, themes are, are of kind of persona. What it's also added is just this magical um, and, and exotic kind of visual language, and films can be like dreams, and I think this film at times is like a dream. 